myths and stereotypes. Our society today has inaccurate perceptions of Africa and we need to break down the barriers like myths and stereotypes that keep us from understanding each other. We tend to take bits of information we have been given from our society and associate the entire continent to that. We have not taken the time to challenge the myths. Common sources of our distorted views come from televised news channels, newspapers, movies, celebrities, and even amusement parks. Africa is more than just exotic animals, AIDS, and gruesome poverty. We should study Africa because the news only presents parts of Africa that arouse emotions, and this only shows a glimpse of Africa. Movies like Lord of War and Blood Diamond lead us to believe Africa is underdeveloped, dirty, and violent. Even Disney's Animal Kingdom stereotypes Africa so that people believe if you go to Africa, you should expect wildlife everywhere and everyone travels by safari ATVs. We are in fact more alike than different if we just take the time to look. Although there are places like these in rural areas, there are also cities like these from different countries in Africa. Because all these stereotypes are present in today's culture, we need to study Africa so that we can accurately understand the continent where civilization first began. Hunting and Gathering in Ancient Africa In the early prehistory of Africa, Africa starts to become a model for Western civilizations. The people populating Africa at that time show us through the development of hunting and gathering how to become a more complex society. This is why we should study Africa and learn about the history of Africa because we can learn a lot from their past. As I said before, Africans were originally hunter-gatherers and moved locations a lot to survive because they had to follow the animals. When the transfer from only being hunter-gatherers started to become hunter-gatherers and agriculturalists, life became a lot easier for them. Domestication was the first step in becoming a more complex African society. Domestication started by learning to grow food around them, then domestication of animals started happening. Through domestication, Africans were able to survive in a more centralized location, and they did not have to move all the time. This is one example proving why we should study Africa and the benefits that we can learn from them. Innovations of Ancient Africa Through many years of development and civilization in ancient Africa, many different innovations were established that are still in existence to this day, such as weapons, tools, language, writing, and even currency. Beginning with the Homo sapiens of 40,000 years ago, we began to see the development of tools and weapons made of stone, bone, leather, or eggshells. These tools were used for hunting and farming. Some of these tools or weapons were bone-tipped harpoons, tidal traps, and nets used for hunting and fishing. Continued through time, we began to see more advancements of the type of tools they used and the ways they made them. Later, stone axes, ground and polished to a fine point and smooth shape, were discovered. These were developed using techniques discovered by the Niger Congo peoples of West Africa between 9000 and 5500 BC, mainly used for cleaning woodlands or to plant yams or other plants. The North and West African states started to become more familiar with raw materials they had to work with and began to develop different techniques for ironworking. These techniques allowed for extreme improvements in technology of its time in areas for making tools, weapons, and decorative ornaments. Due to their discoveries of manipulating these metals, it began a new era of technology. The people of ancient Africa were able to smelt many different metals. Beginning with softer, easier to work with metals, they were able to create very useful tools as well as weapons used most for self-defense on their African state. While studying the sun, stars, and moon, the Egyptians were able to discover the 12th month calendar of 365 days. This exact system we find around in the world of today's time. The development of this calendar helped greatly with the planning of the annual flood to an exact date and help farming, as well as the creation of basic mathematics such as the binary systems, fractions, and formula for calculating the area of a circle and the common principles of a right tri triangle. The discovery helped with the construction of great architectural projects such as the Great Pyramids. These mathematical and scientific discoveries began the development of math and science up to our modern knowledge. Government and Politics in Ancient Africa through continued research, we discovered pieces of evidence supporting the thesis that we study Africa to uncover the process of how civilization becomes complex. All civilizations can locate government and political systems back to the ancient African states. In more detail, the ancient African states were able to create these complex systems of government that involve many processes used today. For example, their creation of a taxation system is used today, except that we use a system of currency of money and not agricultural products. Another concept developed through government is the creation of an army and a system of defense. Thirdly, they were complex enough to create a system of hierarchy. 
these systems of political classes developed throughout time to mold to what we are currently. We have a system that requires our government head and less reforms reporting back to the head of state. We can see this type of political body developed from ancient Africa. Culture in ancient Africa. One of the most interesting yet rarely mentioned parts of ancient Africa was the culture. When describing culture, Curtis Kim gives us examples of how culture has transitioned as a whole into our modern lives. He says, we could eventually turn our hunting and gathering instincts toward job searching or grocery shopping. And we could turn our ability to keep track of what was going on among our neighbors to storytelling, novel writing, and history writing. We could learn to use art, music, and religion to comment on who we are and how we live. All of these things are staples in African culture. Without the study of ancient African culture, we would not know where these ideas and concepts came from and would continue to give credit to the wrong people for practices that were put into thousands of years before the time came. Economy of ancient Africa. One of the major reasons Africa continues to be excluded from the mainstream fair representation in media and history text is the current dependence of many African nations on foreign aid. In reality, however, city-states and empires of Africa have been successful and sometimes dominant forces in international trade. Nations on the continent have engaged in complex economic activity for thousands of years across the continent and the centuries from ancient times to modern, Africans have engaged the world through vast and very important trade networks. In addition to supplying goods such as gold, African merchants were responsible for the introduction of new breeds of domesticated plant and animals and other ecosystems and agricultural markets. The activity of traders of the Swahili city-states in the Indian Ocean Network, Carthage in the Mediterranean, and the various links from Egypt are among the very important connections of ancient Africa with the economy and history of the world.